Okay. Today, this is, this is the compressor to a glass door freezer. It's two cases. I think they're like, I think they're two 12 foot cases bolted together. And I got a call that, and it was off on its pressure safety reset, the high pressure safety reset. And it set all the way up to like over 400, so it got pretty hot. Apparently, it was a very hot day. And what happened was. This condenser motor went bad. And this condenser motor went bad. That was the only one running. It was, with this one not running, they should both be running, pulling the air, both of them pulling the air up. And if only one's working, that one's blowing the air up and it's sucking the air in here. That's the inoperable fan instead of bringing the air up from below through the condenser coil that's the coil we just cleaned this the other day but the, uh, the customer in the back room had a repaired motor sitting in the back luckily for him because I'm sure this isn't not a cheap motor I don't know how much it is, but it's 208, 230 volts, 1075 RPM, single phase, and where's our horsepower? Three-quarter horsepower. It's a big motor for a three-quarter horse. But now I have to install it up on top. Let's I don't know who designed this stupid thing. The suction valve is all the way over there. I literally had to crawl in here to get to the suction valve. And if you see over there, there's a sight glass, the original sight glass. Who's going to be able to see a sight glass there? It's behind the ass end of the, the compressor. Somebody else put a dryer filter in a new uh, sight glass here but this is my with the one fan running today my uh, head pressure is head pressure is uh, 249 my liquid line is 94 the suction line is 43, which is good. The evaporator is minus 47. It's a freezer. So, let me get that motor installed. Okay, I got the motor bolted. There's four bolts on it. Now I have to hook up the wires to it and see if they got the rotation correct. The cup of the fan here, the cup is like this. And this sucks the air and blows it up. So it's got to turn this way. So I have to uh, check that out now.
Okay, get the powers off. A little warm today. So when I tape things up that I'm going to take apart, I fold over the end onto the sticky part so that I have something to grab onto so I don't have to start, you know, peeling my fingernail. But that's only when I want to take something apart. I taped it up for safety, so that in case it rained, you know, it would, uh, wouldn't have a problem. to put this there's a lot of vibration and if you don't get these things it's pretty snug you don't want to over snug it where it cracks but you don't want it to vibrate apart either I think I left this off last time I changed it repaired motor. And the company had repaired it's it's a good company. Done business with them for years. I don't know what the date was on it.
É lá então. Speaking. Yeah. No, I'm not interested in the poker website. Man. I'm, I'm in the middle of working, but thank you. Marketing people. Good. The rotation, it's got to go that, got to turn clockwise shaft in. Carefully, it's a waterproof. It's got rubber on it. This motor is out in the weather here. I'll make sure I get my screws all in it properly. to get at. Okay, that's on good and tight. Now you want this fan. This ha the shaft has a flat surface. We got to get one of these Allen wrenches on that flat surface. over here. So I want to adjust it with my adjustable wrench. This is a hub that you mount onto the fan blade and there's screws on the other side. And it's good when you put these in to not get the screw so you can get different positions on it. It's good to get the screw so it's, you know, find another position where the screw's out here so you can get at it. This is right at the blade here. It's very difficult to uh, tighten it up. I have the flat surface right here, and here's my nut, my Allen nut. Let's 
big blade, it moves a lot of air. And they're rated in CFM. Cubic foot per minute. Okay, I tightened it a pretty tight, and what that did was that head of the Allen dug into the steel of the crankshaft, of the shaft, the motor shaft. Okay, that looks good. These, uh, this guard connects with these, it's kind of a punch-in type of a clip. It's missing over here. This one pulled out. And I have one over here, so I'm gonna have, all I'm gonna have on this is two opposite ones. But that should hold it in place. I, on the way over, I tried to get those square snapping devices, but I wasn't able to. Won't go anywhere. I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's turn it on and see what we get. see our head pressure if it changed any. Hell yeah, it went down to 205. It's 408, this refrigerant. It's a replacement for uh, 502. Somebody uh, didn't want to change it over to So he didn't want to change it over to 404. They're afraid about the oil. It's 75 up here. And let's see. Okay, the Wi-Fi is clicking. I don't know if you can see that. And... 
able to see these things in the sauna. I don't know if it's worth uh, I didn't get it for the Bluetooth function for this function. Hopefully they uh, develop it a little bit more, but I mean everything that's here is here just about. I don't uh, I can get away. Let me see what my connection is. Be careful I don't walk off the roof up. I lost my connection and I'm that far away from it. I don't know how far that is, but it <laughs> ain't far. And it, I don't know. I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't need it to do my job, the Bluetooth function. Okay. So let's see. Suction line is down to 40. The liquid line is 82. The condenser is 94. The evaporator is minus 35. The superheat subtool is 6. Okay guys. blade throws the air out this way. It's gonna be interesting is one of those smoke bombs. But they're both throwing, pulling the air through the condenser and up. Okay guys, that's it for today.